In the book of Luke, chapter number 9, verse 23. This is not a common scripture in this generation. It's not a common sermon in this age and generation. And these are the words of Jesus himself. You know, anytime Jesus spoke, we need to get those words and really internalize them and really know what was he really talking about? What did he really mean? And the Bible says in Luke 9, 23, Jesus says that if any anyone if anyone wants to follow me let him deny himself and pick up his cross and follow me daily I want to do that again if anyone wants to follow me let him deny himself and pick up his cross and follow me in other words we need to live a life of denial a life of death a life that I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. A life that is full of God and less of me. And I want to agree with John in 3.30. John says, well, you need to increase, but I need to decrease. I don't know what has been a life in your life, but Jesus is calling us to a life of self-denial. In other words, you deny the things that you like most, the things that your heart desires, the things of the flesh, the things that gratify the flesh. Jesus Christ says, you know what you guys, if you want to follow me, then you need to deny the works of the flesh and you follow me. And we are living in a time whereby we want the blessings of God. We want the presence of God. We want everything that pertains to God. But we cannot live a life that is full of self-denial. A life that is full of death. You know, dead people are easy to work with. You go to the mortuary and you realize no matter how beautiful you are and you're in a dead body, you cannot command that, that Diana, that mortuary attendant. You realize you can be handsome. You can be a person of influence. But once you are dead, you cannot have any control because somebody is in charge of you and likewise jesus christ is telling his disciples you know what you guys if any of you wants to follow me in other words it's a blank check if any one of you wants to follow me let him deny himself in other words it's not me who lives in other words it's the will of god towards my life it's no longer i it's no longer me it's no longer myself but it is god it is no longer what i desire it is no longer what my education is saying it is no longer what people want me to do but it is what god wants me to do and i've realized that we are living in a life whereby we are full of self and jesus christ is calling us to live a life that is full of self-denial and so many of us are afraid of death that we no longer live anymore we are afraid of dying that we do not experience life it is only when you die you know when you want to 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 go and and plant a seed this is a planting season i suppose a seed has to go through death it's called seed dormancy a seed has to go through death for three four days so that the seed can come up and sometimes when we go through death it's a difficult process it's something that is not easy but yet it is only through death that we can begin to live what is this thing that has been alive in your body you know talk about sex Talk about drug addiction. Talk about the things that gratify the flesh. The things that we want to hear. You know, most of us want to hear Kamatia Chini, you know, and Rombosa. And you know, Nainama, Nainama. You know, these songs are good. But at the end of the day, they are what our ears want to hear. But God wants us to deny the flesh. I have realized that God is never talking to the flesh. God is never speaking to the flesh. God and the flesh have no relationship. But God is always speaking to the spirit. And today now, God wants you to crucify your flesh. The things that have been living in your flesh. It is only when you lose yourself that you can gain. Even in the next scripture, Luke 9, 24. The Bible says that if anyone loses his life for me, he will gain. But if anyone gains his life, then he will automatically lose it. I don't know what are the things that you're holding on to so much. 
the grudges, the unforgiveness, the livelihood that you're living in. God wants you to live that kind of a fleshly life and allow him to be God in your life. I have realized, according to Galatians 5, chapter number 17, I love, I love how the contemporary version says, it says the flesh, I mean the spirit and the flesh are always in battle. And contemporarily says the spirit and the uh, the spirit and the flesh are always enemies with one another. They are constantly fighting. The flesh says, I want to I can't do without a boyfriend. But John, you know what, Kevin? You know, by a time where people are preaching. I don't know how many times you've been told about prosperity, about the things you're supposed to get. Because the message of the gospel of God is all about denying yourself. In other words, my education no longer matters, but what God says is what matters. I don't know how many of you can deny yourself. God has told you maybe to live a certain relationship relationships that are not good relationships that are not healthy and God says you know what I want to use you but you have to quit that relationship can you quit that relationship for the purposes of God God says enough is enough with this drug addiction with alcoholism with immorality can you say no because denying yourself is all about saying no to me and saying yes to the will of God. What I want no longer matters. What I desire no longer matters. What I've achieved, my education no longer matters. But what matters is God. There is this song that we've all, we've all heard about it. It's one of the trending songs, a very good gospel song. It's called, You Are The One That Matter. I'll make room for two. You are all that matters. And I want to imagine the mind that this person was having when he was singing this song. It's not just about singing. It's not just about the beautiful voice that he has. It's not just about the instruments that are, that are getting to, that are, that are joining or that are rhyming. But I'm sure this man got to a point whereby he looks at his life. And you know what he says, give me a car. It no longer matters to me. This man reaches a point where he says, give me a house. It no longer matters to me. But what that matters is you, God. And I want you to reach at that point where nothing else matters, but it is only God that matters for you. Even as you listen to this song, you need to listen it with revelation. What was in the mind of this person when he was singing this particular song? Oh God, you are the one that matters. I want to deny my flesh. I want to deny what can feed my flesh. And I want us to cite an example of young men in the Bible. Because young men can also be pure. The clothes of righteousness never go out of fashion. Anytime, the, anytime you put on the garments of righteousness, the clothes of righteousness, the miniskirt of righteousness, the bra of righteousness, in other words, your attire of righteousness, righteousness and the garments of righteousness never go out of fashion. I have seen clothes from the 90s go out of fashion. I have seen clothes in early 2000s go out of fashion. I have seen clothes in the early 80s and 70s. They've gone out of fashion. But the clothes and the garments of righteousness are always in fashion. In 2020, they will be in fashion. In next year, they will be in fashion. And these young men, they are captured and they are brought to the king. And the king 
and because they need to look presentable to the king. And in Daniel 1, it's a beautiful story. I'm sure we all know about the story. And so Daniel and the other people, they were, and the other young men, they were kept together. And so Daniel, at one point, they needed to eat some good food. I love how verse 8 puts it. Verse 8 in the are some good delicacies. You know, some talk about some hamburger. Talk about some nyamachoma and kuku. Talk about, you know, sausage and chips. They had some good meal. Yet, Bible says, Daniel says that I will not defile my body. Daniel talked to the chief eunuch. He had found favor with the eunuch. Daniel says to this eunuch, please, in verse 12, I don't want to eat the meat and the, and the wine that the king is offering. Just kindly, if you can allow us. We only need to drink water and some veggies. You know, some vegetables, some cabbage, some skuma skuma, maybe some even maragwe because they are classified into that. And, and Daniel begged the, the, the chief eunuch. The chief eunuch said, I'm going to be in trouble. The king needs to see you in good shape. But in other words, because Daniel had found favor, anytime you deny sin, God will always give you favor. It, 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 it's a good thing to know who you are, to know where God to know that you cannot defile the God inside you. Bible says, after 10 days, let me just read for you how verse number 12 really puts it in its immediate context. Bible says, uh, Bible says in verse 12, please test your servant for 10 days and let them give them vegetables to eat and water to drink. In other words, you, they were denying their flesh. You know, I doubt if we had some nyama choma, if, if you're watching me somewhere, if you had some nyama choma around there and some sausages around there and, and another person brings some avocado and maybe some boga and then somebody tells you to choose. I'm sure most of us would go for the nyama choma and the kuku. But Daniel says no. We cannot do the nyama choma way. But let us go the veggies way. In other words, we cannot defile our bodies. And Bible says give us just 10 days. Because anytime you decide to live according to the spirit, the God lifts you up. You know, it does not matter what people are taking. It does not matter the level of education people have. It does not matter how many times people have outsmarted you. They might have a degree, but when you're with God. They might have a PhD, but when you're with God. They might have mansions and influence and connection. But anytime you say, uh, you say no to ungodliness and you say yes to God, God will lift you up. He is a faithful God and when you walk by faith and when you are faithful God cannot let you down in Jesus name and so Daniel says we will eat veggies then this chief eunuch after some time this chief eunuch comes and looks at them I want you to go to verse 15 Bible says and at the end of 10 days at the end of 10 days their features and their appearance looked better and fatter Flesh than all the young men who ate the other portion of delicacies. Look at that. You know, sometimes you might look at yourself and say, I cannot do without a boyfriend. Oh my goodness. Oh, this body, I cannot do without a boyfriend. I cannot do without a girlfriend. I cannot do without smoking bang. I cannot do without blah, 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 blah. I have to go to parties. I have to drink alcohol. I have to do this and this and this and this. That's where you find, you feel like there is life. But the moment you decide, you know what? I want to deny myself. You will realize that God fills the gap of a girlfriend more than the, more a, a girlfriend can do. You, can just, you, can, you will find out that God fills the portion of a girlfriend, of a boyfriend. God fills the portion of drug addiction. Because this woman at the well, in John chapter 4, he thought that men could satisfy him. You know, he went to men and, and he was a guru. He was a prostitute of that time. Everybody knew that he was a man snatcher maybe But until he met these living waters You know waters that when you drink you can never run dry Waters that when you drink you can never run dry And the secret is just coming to the well How I pray today now that you will bring you will come to the well To the well is where the flesh is crucified And God will give you beauty I want to agree with Galatians 2.20 Galatians says I no longer live. That this life that I live in, it's only God. 
I just feel like beginning how he really says. He says, I have been crucified by Jesus. Oh my goodness. It means I, it means John is not living anymore. It means Jerry is not living anymore. Because this life that I live in, this is not my life. But this is the life that God has given unto me. In other words, this is not me that I live. In other words, God has entrusted me with his own life. His life is what I'm living with. Is what I'm living on. Is what I'm living on. And I want to agree with Acts chapter 17 verse 28 just to echo that. Acts says that in him I live. In him I live. I don't live in myself. In him I live. I don't just live. In other words, in him I live. And in him I move. And in him I have my being. In other words, without Christ I cannot move. In other Christ I have no being. In other words, without Christ I'm vulnerable. Without Christ I am, I am useless. Without Christ my life is empty. Without Christ I'm just like a dying man. Without Christ I am dead and never to resurrect again. Without Christ I am empty. Without Christ I'm vulnerable. It's only the presence of God. It's only Christ that can make a distinction in your life. I no longer live because I've been crucified by Christ. That this life that I live in, I live it by faith, by faith and by faith. Today now, I want you to realize that you can crucify that flesh. That your desires are no longer important. You know, to some of you, God can say, you know what, this has not been your ministry. God wants you to change your ministry. Maybe you've been singing and God is taking you to the extent of an intercessor. In other words, it's not what I feel I can do. It's not what my body feels I can do. It's not what my education feels it can do. But it's what God says I can do. I don't know about you today. But can you quit your job? I'm not saying you quit your job. But if God says, you know what, I want you to quit your job. I want you to quit your job. Can you deny the flesh and say, if God has said, then he can be faithful to bring it unto completion. Because he is God. Sometimes you have to make tough decisions. There's this sometime last year, everybody was on TV when we were watching Kipchoge run. And Kipchoge, the, the scientists and the doctors had said that no one can really run up to 40 kilometers. And they say that it could take up to 70 years, 20, 75 years, for a person to run that long. But at some point, when Kipchoge was running, I'm sure he got tired. I'm sure there are times his body said, you know what, I cannot do it. There are times he said, I'm tired. There are times I said, God, I feel like I'm losing it all. But because he saw somewhere that he was going, he had to deny the desires of the flesh. He is tired, his legs are tired, his muscles are tired, but Kipchoge, Kipchoge, Kipchoge had it going. He said, I'm not conforming to what my body is saying. I'm not conforming to what my flesh is saying, but I'm conforming to what my mind is saying. He said, I will not be conformed to what my body is saying. But he said, I'm running. I have to win this race. And at the end of it all, he won the race. And now we are saying no human is limited. And maybe let us change that a little bit. And let us say, no person who knows Christ is limited. No man, no born again person. If you're born again, behold, according to 2 Corinthians 5.17, behold, you are a brand new. You are a brand new. You are a brand new. Behold, the old is gone. Behold, the old is gone. And here is the new you now. You can do it. You can crucify that flesh. You can crucify that addiction. You can crucify what is pinning you down. And this is why as young men, we cannot listen to the voice of God. God is speaking to us. But because you are living in a life that is full of flesh, we cannot listen to the voice of God. Because God is not speaking to the flesh. God is not speaking to the flesh. I know you are beautiful, but God is not speaking to that figure. I know you are handsome, but God is not speaking to that face. I know you have a six pack, but God is not speaking to that six pack. I know you've got connection. I know your body is good, but God is speaking 
to the spirit man instinct you. And even in the morning, before you wake up and, and you know what, you put some makeup on your body, I think it's high time you really need to check on yourself before putting on makeup in your body. Put in makeup in your spirit first. Before looking at yourself in the mirror, look how the inner man looks at the mirror. Before you can dress well in your outer body, I think it's high time we need to dress the inner man well. Because that inner man, that is what God is speaking to today. That is what God is saying. You know what? I want you. Crucify the flesh. Of what reason? I love verse 25 of Luke 9, 23. Before I go back to Daniel and finish. I love verse 9. Verse 24 says, For whoever, this, uh, verse 25, For what profit is it to a man? For what profit is it there for a man? Oh my goodness. To gain the whole world and yet lose his soul what profit is there for you to get 5,000 followers in Facebook and yet lose your soul of what importance is it to get 1 million followers in Instagram and you celebrate yet you lose your soul what importance is it for a man to gain a Range Rover or to buy a plot yet lose your soul I pray that you will consider everything useless that my A is no longer important but useless that my academics, my connections, what I have is useless but God is true I no longer live but Christ lives in me Philippians says in 1.21 he says for me to live for me to live is Christ I love how he says to die is gain how I pray today now that you'll begin to live a life that is full of death. Bring down that body. Crucify that body. You know, sometimes you can talk to that body and tell your body, you are not going to lead me to hell. You're not going to do what I don't want you to do and allow the spirit man to win in your life. And so Daniel and these other Hebrew men, they say, we are not going to take meat and drinks, but we are going to take vegetables and water you know what you can survive in a diet that the world feels is not a good diet the world right now if you tell somebody that i no longer want to hear naina my name i don't want to hear diamond song but i want to hear christina shusho song right now i don't want to hear what the world is saying i don't want to hear secular songs anymore but i want to hear the word of god people will look at you and say i Hi, hi. Anybody not going with to anasema? Because anytime you deny your flesh and you say, I don't want to listen to secular songs. I don't want to feed my body anymore. You know, even runners, when every morning sometimes I see people running. You know, sometimes even when you go to a doctor and the doctor tells you, you need to reduce your weight. The, the, the doctor gives you a menu. He, he makes a recipe. He makes, what is it called? Nutrition, nutritional foods. And he tells you, you need to do this, avoid this, avoid some butter, avoid some cheese, avoid some nyamachoma so that you can reduce your body. And people are so faithful. You find people waking up as early as 5 a.m. Running for two hours. Because the doctor has said. Today now, I bring to you a doctor. Who is more than a doctor. Who is called Jesus. He has said that deny your flesh. And I want to jump to verse 15. Of Daniel 1 verse 15. Of verse 14. Bible says. Uh, where was I? Bible says in verse 15. In verse 20. I'll go to verse 20, Daniel 1, 20. The Bible says, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding, you need to realize that this thing of what you could say more lot when you have a song and you wanna pend a mungu, that's a lie. You know, talk about understanding. Talk about wisdom. I don't think we are in any match compared to Daniel. Talk about handsomeness talk about the physical stature these men were cute these men were handsome these men had what it takes i mean they were hot cakes they had what it and despite their physical look they heard understanding and wisdom bible says about the king examined them 
If today now we can examine you, what can we find? He found them You cannot deny yourself and lose it all. Actually, when you deny, you gain. You know, now I want to agree with, with John. Thinking John, Matthew 6.33, sorry. Matthew 6.33. You know, Matthew says, Matthew looks around and, and Matthew thinks about and Matthew says, you know what? Don't, the, I think the secret is not me seeking for a job. The secret is not in me looking for a promotion. The secret is not in me Matthew agrees and Matthew says that seek God uh -huh. seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness and it says all these things you're looking for you know we are looking for something people are looking for things people are looking for jobs people are looking for promotion people are looking for advancement people are looking to build but Matthew says hey there the secret is not in going to America for education, but the secret is in having intimacy with God. In other words, you seek Him. When I came to the church, I used to see some small children sing it. And you really had to go and find that person. That is how God is found. You cannot just wake up out of your bed. Ah! And you say, God, where are you? You have to go down on your knees and find God. Find God. Crucifying the flesh. Father, we thank you for today. Crucifying the flesh. How I pray today now, even as I wind up, that you will reach at a moment of, but you know that crucifying the flesh, there is gain. And so many of you who are watching me, you're so much afraid to die than you are afraid to live. Jesus Christ already faced it all. He faced shame, pain, and rejection. And he experienced the physical death. And that is what makes Christianity different from any other religion. That we have a pioneer who died and resurrected. And any time you die to your flesh, any time you die to your lustly desires, you say, from today henceforth, I want to reduce more of what's up and more of God. You say, I want to reduce more. I want to reduce Instagram and more of God. I want to, I want to, 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 to reduce more of social media and more of God. You know, I want God, you increased in my life. Facebook will not increase in my life. Instagram will not increase in my life. Social media will not increase in my life. But if there is anything that is to increase, it's only you, God, in the name of Jesus. God bless you so much even as we wind up. Maybe it, we can think about doing a part two. Because it's not something that we can finish in one day. About denying the flesh. Because you cannot follow Jesus. Left to deny your flesh. Left to deny what your flesh wants. Your flesh wants girlfriends and boyfriends. But the spirit says no this is not the time. Your, your, your flesh wants to do things that are contrary to the word of God. Because the flesh and the spirit like I say. They are a constant battle. How I pray today now. That you will die to your flesh in Jesus name. And I want us to pray together. Maybe you are watching us. And you haven't received Christ in your life. Or maybe you, 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 you backslided. I want you to know that God loves you. In Romans 8, the Bible says, For now there is no condemnation therefore. For now there is no condemnation therefore. For those in Christ Jesus. That Christ does not condemn you. It might be you've been walking according to the flesh. Gratifying and feeding the flesh. But today now there is no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. That you can begin a brand new life because you are in Christ Jesus. Because greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. You have greatness. Greatness is not found in Jubilee. Greatness is not found in NASA. Greatness is not found in America. Greatness is not found in Karen or America. But a great man is a man that has God in his life. That no matter how small you are, you can carry out exploits. Words. Bible says in Romans 10 8 that if you confess him verse 9 
if you confess him with your mouth and acknowledge that he is Lord over your life, that's enough for you to begin anew. Maybe just repeat this words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, we come, I come to you today, God. I crucify my flesh, O Father, that any lastly desires that are in me, O God, that you may remove them in the name of Jesus. How I pray that you will deliver me from the stage of death and write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Father, because you know me. Thank you, God, because Jeremiah 29, 11 tells me that you have a plan for me, not just for me, but also for everything that concerns me. I thank you, God, because the works of the flesh are now crucified in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for that person who has received you today. I thank you, God, even as he begins to journey with you, God, that God, you're going to be with them. Father, even as we finish, we thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, God, even for the church, for allowing us, God, to minister, to, to have this opportunity to minister, oh, Father. We thank you, God, because your ways are not our ways. Even as, God, we, we purpose to crucify our flesh, oh, God. We cannot do all these things because the Bible says in Philippians 4.13, for I can do all things, all things. I can crucify the flesh. I can stop listening to secular music. I can stop feeding the flesh, not through my ability but through Christ who strengthens me. Thank you because God you are going to strengthen us at a time like this. At a time where everybody is feeding the flesh. At a time where everybody is saying less of God and more of me. I pray that God you are raising a generation. A generation that will crucify your flesh. A Daniel generation. A generation that will not just crucify the flesh but a generation that will worship you. A generation that will worship you in spirit and in truth. Father I thank you because you you have already heard us, oh God. Thank you, God, even as we begin this new week. May you protect us. May you open up doors that no man can open. May you shut doors, oh God. Doors that men had opened, doors of frustration. May you shut them, oh God. I pray for this youth who doesn't have a job. I pray that you will give them a job, oh Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for this girl, for this mother who has been crying for a promotion, who has been crying for a husband. I pray for this man who has been crying for a wife, oh God, that you will give them according to their heart's desire, oh God, that God all the glory will come back to you, oh God, even as the young men begin and come to testify in church, that God you have done it for them, oh God, the glory will not go to our education the glory will not go to our church the glory will not go to what concerns us, but all the glory will go back to you, God we thank you because you are ever faithful. What is it that God you cannot do, O oh Father? Today we want to agree with Jeremiah that you are the God of all flesh. Is there anything too difficult for you to do, O oh Father? Father, today we are here. We surrender all. We surrender our bodies. We surrender our might. We surrender our ability to the cross, O oh Father. We thank you for you of harness. Even as we begin this week, it's not going to be a week like any other. It's going to be a week like, it's going to be a week. It's not going to be a normal week, oh God. We declare your presence according to Exodus 33:15, That you will be with us on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday, and even on Sunday. Even as we come back, oh God, to all our viewers, God, they will text in. They will say that God has done this for us, oh God. Even for those who have made it possible and we are here, oh God. God, no one has ever come into your presence and left the same way. Look at God, the people who have come here, God, they've sacrificed their all, oh God. You know their deep desires, you know their cries, oh God. Cries that God, nobody can tell. You know what these people, you know what these young men are going through. The struggles that they're going through, oh God. Oh Father, may you heal their hurts. May you give them joy again. May you give them beauty for ashes. And it is by Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Somebody shout amen. Amen. God bless you.